Okay, it looks like we are live and going. I'm just going to make sure that everything's up and running, but I want to welcome everybody to the stream. And uh, today we are going to continue on with um, Mr. President here. We had some great feedback from the first session and uh, asking Mike if we want to do it again. He was like, yes, we have a lot of people asking for more. And Honestly, last time we did a lot of explaining, we had a little few things um, go uh, with, you know, we had we, we accomplished or we didn't accomplish much. We had a lot of stuff happen to us um, and we didn't get to do too much. Um, and if you guys remember, um, and I'm going to go up here and show you my last card that we dealt with was the time man of the year. And um, we ended up I was not even close. <laughs> So I had the Kentucky Derby winner uh, was mentioned before mine. So, you know, hey, uh, that's a horse. That's impressive. But today we have a couple of guests on the live stream. We have Mike uh, Berticelli, who is the developer. Uh, so, uh, Mike, say hi. Hey, everybody. Glad you guys could make it. We have a special guest. Thanks, Mike. We have a special guest. We have the designer, and the owner of GM Team Games, we have Gene. So, Gene, how's it going? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on, Tony. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, I, I appreciate everybody coming in. We've got quite a few people. Um, and, uh, Gene, uh, I, since I've got you on here, uh, let's do – I just have a few questions. Um, we had some feedback uh, about the turn sequence and things like that, that, hey, we had um, – you know, a lot happened to us, but we didn't do a lot. Uh, and you were just mentioning that that's part of the uh, uh, turn sequence. So why don't you go ahead and explain how why how that worked or your design view on that? Yeah, can you zoom in just a tad more on the turn yeah. sequence? Thing? On the turn sequence? Yeah, sure. No yeah. problem. Let me All get right, that so good and centered. The, the way this is built, um, you remember, Tony, when you guys started, you drew uh, three... Uh, cascading events cards to kind of set the stage in the world. Um, these are things that, that you inherited from the old administration. And so I want you to think of this in terms of action reaction in this game. And what I didn't want is the player just to always be reacting to a solitaire system. I wanted there to be a mix of reacting to problems it gave you and then being able to work your own plan. Okay. So the game starts pretty much with those um, cascading events. And then you get at the bottom of the uh, left-hand column there, you get a one action for POTUS and each of your cabinet members. And this mm -hmm. is a chance when you can react a little bit to those cascading events, but also begin to set out your plan for what your administration is going to be. And then in every activation phase, we kind of do the same thing. We start with the left-hand column where your all of the games, um, all the ways that the game opposes you, they predominate. And that's where we were last time is, you know, we were getting a China axe and then we were getting all those crisis cards. And in the midst of that, we got one little reaction phase, that one that says any three actions. So I didn't want it just to go bang, bang, bang. You know, the game hits you in the head and you wake up and, you know, 42 things happen to you and they're all bad. So you always get a reaction uh, to the column where they predominate. And now we go to the next column in that activation phase. And here is where your actions are going to predominate. And ideally what you want to do in these areas is plug your finger in the dike for any big problems that are happening while also uh, continuing to play out your plan, you know, continuing to work your plan. So if you look down here, our allies are going to start first, and then we're going to uh, have some domestic actions and the legislative segment. So we'll get to talk about our legislative agenda. And then right in the middle of that, the game gets a reaction phase. So there's a draw one shit, and it's only one here. It couldn't, pluses don't mm -hmm. matter. So they're going to get to throw some little wrench into your plans. And, and you know, a few of those cards are good, but mostly when you draw chits, it's not good for you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed. <laughs> and, and then we get national intelligence, which helps us. And the end of ours is any four diplomatic or military actions. So that's when we really go play on the world stage. Whereas toward the beginning, we're going to play on the domestic stage. So that's how all four of those work, where you've got the the enemy, if you will, the, the, the game is is presenting all kinds of problems for you and you can react, but you don't want to use all your actions to react if you can help it because you still want to be working your plan. And then the second part, you really get to hit it hard with some reaction from the opponents and you pretty much do the whole thing. And then at the end, that last column on the right, the opponents predominate for just a very short time. And the reason that's there is we didn't want players to be able to like plan their perfect moves in those last four actions in the activation phase four and in the turn, you know, in really great position. So you might mm -hmm. think you are, and then the enemy gets a vote again. And, <laughs> and, and that's how you kind of end the turn. Cause there's a lot of things in the end of turn consequences between each turn that change the game state. So we didn't want you to be able to control that too much. And that's kind of it. I, I hope that answers your question about turn sequence. Yeah, actually, I didn't notice that until you actually pointed it out. And I'm kind of glad you did, because now that makes total sense. You have the left side is is basically the everybody's going against you, because I don't care how many crisis chits or cards you draw. Generally, the good does not outweigh <laughs> outweigh what what bad could right. happen. Exactly. You know. But then you do get a little bit in there, so you can be like, okay, I can get a little bit in there. And you may be lucky and not pull one of the crisis shit with the pluses. That that kind of is, I kind of enjoy that when you just, oh, it's just a just one crisis. You know, oh, yeah. I'm not going to deal with five or six this time. Um, right. So it's kind of fun because that does help it. You don't know the variation of how bad it's going to be or, or anything like that. But then on the right hand side, you're like, oh, I get to do stuff now. Oh, they get a little bit here. But, oh, I get to do stuff there. So, you know, and, and that one chit, though, I will have to say, that doesn't mean you only get to draw one card. There's a possibility you're still drawing three crisis cards with that one chit. That is so, correct. So it's it's not like, a, it's not like a, oh, it's only one chit. Well, that one chit could be pretty dangerous at that. So, Well, that's part of the fun, Tony, right? And when, yep. Tony, and when Tony's playing, yeah, usually I'll guarantee I'll get a three. Just look at it, the comments, guys. Whatever you do, please do not let Rachel roll the dice. Uh, I can almost guarantee uh, it's worse with me. <laughs> I, I, now that I'd like to see, Rachel versus Tony. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe we could do a, a cage cage match or something, you know, Rachel. Yeah. Versus. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I really want to get a lot of gameplay done. So what we're going to do is, uh, if you have questions, go ahead, type it in the chat. And as we go through, I'll take a pause and um, we'll go through and see if there's any questions. And then Gene or Mike, whoever can answer the question best, we'll go ahead and have you guys uh, answer the questions. Um, I, I'll tell you what, I love this game. I was talking to Gene right before. Um, uh, I, I appreciate what he's done here. It is immense. And I know Mike's been put a lot and there's a whole team there that's been getting this going. Um, I know it's been a while, but the, the wait is definitely going to be worth it guys. Once you get this to your table, uh, I, I don't want to guarantee you'll love it, but I think everybody that, that likes this type of game is really going to enjoy it. And it's just going to be a lot of fun and you're going to get frustrated again, but again, I don't know what solo game doesn't frustrate me. So uh, <laughs> we the already have, uh, right. yeah, yeah. Good ones always frustrate me. I I don't want a solitaire game that I can beat the first time I play it because hopefully either I didn't cheat or it's too easy one of the times. So um, do we have an, um, and I will get this out there right now. Do we have an idea when we're looking at heading to the printers, by the way, Gene? When Jason says we can is the answer. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my guess is it's a few weeks. It's okay. If it's definitely not months, I, I would. Okay. I'd be surprised if it wasn't off to the printer by the end of September. Oh, good, good. That sounds good. Um, I just, um, uh, ID Jester just asked that question. I'm like, you know what? I bet everybody wants to know when this is going to the printers. So let's get that part out of the way. I'll put you on the spot. But yeah, it it seemed like it was sooner rather than later, which sounds good. So. Okay, so we're halfway through uh, the first activation phase. Um, I moved my chit up here. So um, we're going to go with the ally and rogue groups. And this is randomized. So, again, you don't know how this is going to turn out every, every time. And, again, 
one turn, guys, is one time all the way through the sequence. Okay. So one of these all the way through is one turn. So think of it as a year. Uh, it's one quarter of your presidency. So one thing uh, real quick, Tony. Yeah. For everybody that's watching, there's a sequence of play, a flip book at the oh, top yeah. of the uh, module. And we are at the bottom here. So he'll probably be looking here and you'll just kind of follow along and it just guides you exactly what what you need to do so the first and, thing and we're i can do i can here. put it up a little bit more centered too i'll just do this so you guys can kind of see uh so we're at the bottom with the allied and road groups act um so for those watching this later you can pause this and read it if you really want to so um but basically yeah he's gonna he's gonna draw one chit randomly from yep. down in this area yep so we're gonna pull one chit out here and I got group D is going to be my first one, of course. Well, uh, the snap points are off a little bit. Just put it down. Don't worry about it. They're, okay. They're gonna, they're gonna snap yeah, it really off. doesn't matter so much. So group D, uh, that is going to be, let me get the right chart up here for this. That is going to be can it Canada. I almost said Canada. I, I don't know why I do that, but Canada. Sorry, Canadians. But Canada, the Gulf States, and my rogue nations, which I don't know if I have too many of those actually right now. I think I have uh, one rogue, um, yeah, one rogue state, uh, two rogue states. I got one in the Middle East um, and then one over here in Central Asia. Um, so, but what's really nice is these um, charts, they tell you exactly what to do first and foremost uh, as we go through. So uh, we're going to go through them. So these allies act only in their region, except for Canada, who can affect the Eurozone, Central, or South America. So I'm going to activate Canada. So Canada is going to be activated, and let's go ahead. We're going to – oh, let me get the right buttons here. I'm still a tabletop kind of novice. I'm still working through it, but I'm getting it there. Okay, note the um, relationship. We are very close still with our uh, brethren up north, which is really nice. So we are going to form a number of actions. The possible joint actions you can choose are below. So the number of actions is determined by the ally relationship. So we are going to have two joint actions. So first thing, our possible joint action is Intel. which I did get a terror group. That was the other thing I forgot. I did have a freaking terror group. Uh, in CODIS. So we're going to we're gonna probably work on that one. So we can locate the terror group in the region. Choose a terror group. Uh, so I can intel, I can raid, I can stabilize the region, I can reinforce, I can de-escalate, I can request human aid in any region, or I can remove stress in two tensions from this ally. Well, we have no tension, so that's not a problem. But I do think we need to get rid of this terror group up here. So I think that's going to be one of my first joint actions. Now, I think I can, okay, locate any terror group in the region, choose a terror group, then place it in the gathering intel box, which we did. Or if they were in the intel track, move the group to the next intel track. Oh, it's an auto success. So automatically he's locating. Um, now, uh, this says one max, auto success, one max. So I can only do this action once, is that correct? That's correct, but notice that uh, Canada has an advantage. Okay. At the, at the bottom of number one, Tony, it yeah. says Canada gets two Intel successes per joint action. Oh, thank you. I did not read that. For see, that's so, I yell at my students for that. Don't read the whole thing. <laughs> read all of the words slowly. Slowly, and yes, we talked about this. Read it slowly. So Canada gets two Intel successes per. So this one automatically jumps up to targeting. You could do that. Yeah. Or yep. remember, they, they can also act in Central or South America or the Eurozone. Yeah, well, I, I don't like having a terror group in CONUS. That's, like, okay. actually leading to automatic loss. So <laughs> okay. uh, it's, it, it's, I don't want it there. So we're going to go ahead and go through that. Yeah, I can tell. Somebody's trying to call me when I'm doing a live stream. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we are going to, so with that, I want to get rid of it. So we're going to go ahead and make a, a special forces raid. 
against the terror group in the regions uh, targeted fixed intel box. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So the raids. Now you guys got to remember which. Got to remind me which oh, chart. That's Tony, that. yeah. Tony, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Tony. Go ahead. Look at where Canada can act. Oh, we can act eurozone, Central or South America. Oh, do I have so eurozone in Central and South America? Okay, so they can actually act quite a few places. So there are things that the can that the Canadians can do to help in Conus. Mm -hmm. But not so much um, joint actions. Okay. Okay. So, so I can only do Intel once. Let's see. I can attempt to stabilize a region, which would be any of those three regions. That would. Uh, that's a good idea for um, Central America, possibly. Um. Uh, there's no allies, so that's not a problem. If an ally has a conflict track, um, no, they don't have a, one there. Uh, we can humanitarian aid. See, it's a different, it's a good choice to do it between uh, stabilizing the region, which I don't think I can actually do if I remember right. Because that's not, that's not the regional crisis is too high. So for allies, mm -hmm. so you can, you can always choose stabilize, but you get a DRM in your favor if the crisis regional crises are zero. okay on the one and four increase. Okay, I see. Again, I so roll a D ten minus one if it's at crisis zero. It's um, Central America is not, and that'd be the one I'd want to work on. Right. So it'd just be a one to four, basically, is will increase stability. Correct. And that's stability of four. And I think I dropped that, had to drop that last time. So let's go ahead. That'll be the second joint action is we're going to try to stabilize um, the uh, Central America. So we're going to go ahead and roll this die here, this green one right here. So we're going to go ahead and roll it, which is, we got a nine. That is not good. <laughs> So that was not good. So joint actions are done. Uh, we didn't have any tension counters, so I don't need to worry about that. Make a D10 on a unilateral action die roll. That's on the back here, isn't it? Yep, D10. Okay, so I'm going to go on this action table. Um, uh, let's see here. DRMs, I can do a max of plus five. I'm assuming that's plus or minus five, or is it just plus five? Plus or minus five, you're correct. Okay, okay. Um, minus one if no tensions on Canadian counter. There are no tensions, so I get a minus one. Um, I don't get any pluses. Uh, is there Russian in... Uh, yes, Russia has influence in the Eurozone, so I get a plus one, so I'm back to zero. Uh, plus one per level three, four and terror group in CONUS. Uh, I don't have a level three, four, so we're good there. And if the Russia, Russia, NATO co uh, conflict status value is greater than one on the conflict track. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that conflict track over here. And it is greater than one. So we're going to get a net one uh, on the die roll. So let's figure out what happens. Net one on the die roll. I'd roll. You've got a three plus one is a four. So trade. Increase economic impact in Eurozone. Uh, one to six or CONUS seven plus. Place an improving economic counter on the affected uh, state of economic track. If the selected SOE is already at seven, advance the other SOE. If both SOEs are at seven, ignore this result. Okay, so I've got a roll to figure out where I'm going. Uh, three, so it will be the Eurozone. And there's currently a decline. So the nice thing is, and let's zoom in on this. So this is the state of economy track on the Eurozone. Um, so what I, it's already a worsening. So since we're going to do an improvement, basically we're going to take that away from here. 
and and put it over here. So that yeah, takes it's a three level. Um, yeah, yeah. To change it, you have to. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you have to change it. You have to do. If you're worsening, you have to get it back to neutral, which is what it would be. This would I would consider this neutral. It's not uh, improving or worsening. And then you have to get another improving. And then you have to get another improving to actually move it forward. So good good point on, on that. Now we apply results to the unilateral action, which we just did. Then we remove all of Canadians flip tensions, which we don't have any one with that. So, okay, now we're gonna activate the Gulf states using the same procedure described in number two above, except for with the Gulf states and uh, SA, which is Saudi Arabia. So, um, which is not going to be good here. Because we're estranged. <laughs> so, so no joint actions, no joint actions. Um, but so when finished the joint flip over all tension counters. Well, let's see how many tension counters I have here. Oh, I have, looks like I've got two tension counters. I'm getting a little you're going to want to flip those tony because you're still yep. going to do a unilateral action okay yeah that's what i figured so i figured if you don't do a you still got to do b c d and e with it right. come, when it comes to that so so we flipped them over we have a plus one and a plus one so we have plus two total because I, those affect the die rolls okay now we're going to uh make a d10 on the unilateral specifically for the gulf states um, and we have plus one per tension. So we get a plus two on this die roll, um, half plus half rounded down current state of value on GS SA in Iran conflict. Okay. So whatever that status is, which we'll get over to that conflict G plus SA versus Iran, right? Yep. So it's two. So it's half, which is one rounded down. So it's a one. So we're going to get a plus three. Um, and they are not at war. Right. So it's going to be a plus three to this die roll. So I just got to remember to slow down when I'm going through these things. Uh, Mike had to give me <laughs> having that Canada thing um, really made me roll. Okay. I got a nine uh, plus three, which is a 12. <laughs> Uh -oh. oh no! Oh no! Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> this is not. This is not good. Okay, let's go through this slowly. Plus two tensions. Oh wait, hold on. I got. It. Let me make sure I do this in the right order first. Um. Yeah. Apply the results. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. We're good. Okay. I was just making sure I had it right. Okay. Plus two tensions on the GSSA in Iran. So those are two no. new tensions. You have renewed offenses in Yemen. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for running that title. I just get I just get going with it and forget about the, the that part. Um, increase GSSA Iran conflict track by one. So that's going to go all the way over here, and this is going to go up to now three. Okay. Which is not good. If already at war with Yemen, they are not. Plus two to the golf stores and strength. If not at war with Yemen, set up war. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay, so we've got to set up a war. This is not going to go fast by any means now. <laughs> nope. So, okay. So we're going to, uh, let me get, that's the world charts. There it is. And that will be W, what was it? W5? WM5. WM5. Okay. That's WD, WD, WM3. WM5. Here we go. Okay. Okay, all wars, what to do? Place a conflict type counter uh, with the type of conflict on the war strategy. Okay, so this is, this tell me what. Set up war, GA strength five, Yemen strength three. 
Okay, so this will be war number two, and war number two is going to go up here in the Middle East. Okay, and we are going to have uh, GASA um, is the attacker, and then Yemen. We've got a Yemen, right? We have a Yemen one. It's on the other side. Okay, yep. Thank you. Um, why? Oh, there it is. There it is. Got it. Okay, and then we have GASA strength is five. Yemen strength is three. Is three, yep. Okay. Okay, so the, uh, now I'm going to go through the, the war progress because that, that makes it either. Um, it's going to be a combined air ground unless otherwise um, directed. I do not see that it is anything but that. So it will be a combined air ground war. Place a conflict status marker on the stalemate box. Uh, so that's going to be here. Conflict area, place the country at war, which I just did. Uh, if you're unsure or the gameplay does not specify which attack to start of a given award determined randomly, well, to me, they're, the SGSSA is initiating this one. So We've already got the strengths, so I do not need to do the strength tables. Am I correct on that one? That's right. Correct. Okay. Just, just going through. Determine the strength yep. for U.S. side, but the U.S. side does not have it. Yeah, you can't ask for U.S. help because you're estranged. Yep. Mm-hmm. In, in reading on, it's going to talk about if the allied relationship is very close. Okay. So, determine strength for you. Okay, that's not on the U.S. side. So, do you actually do a progress roll for this? That that was a question. So, we you do. Always, you always do that, Tony. But okay. To go back where Mike was, he's yeah. still he's still reading the the results from Ally and Rogue. So oh, right. if you're halfway through okay. there, it's about where you left off to set the five yeah. and the three. Yeah. If, if the ally relationship's very close, then you can ask the U.S. for help. Okay. Which would, which would be good. strange. Yeah. Not. Um, so, so now you, you can basically ignore um, the rest of that on that result and just go to the war creation stuff, which you're right on track with that. Okay. So we don't need to determine strength for U.S. side. We don't need to do that because the U.S. is not effective. Am I correct on that? Correct. You're right to determine odds. Okay. There we go. Uh, express the attacker uh, attacker strength versus defender strength as an odds ratio, rounding down fractions in favor of the defender. So this would be what? Two to... Th three to two? Five divided by... Uh, one to one because there's not a three to two column on the combat charts. Okay. Uh, so it'd be one to one. D uh, determine any applicable DRMs using the war progress roll for surprise types of forces. Okay, so. I know I've got the combat charts. Here we go. Nope. I want to make sure I get to that point. Okay. So determine any duplicable, applicable DRMs to the ensuing war progress rolls for surprise type forces. Um, DRMs combined. Okay. Surprise attack. I don't, it's not said, so I'm assuming that it's not a surprise attack. Correct. The uh, only if, one of those you might have, Tony, because I can't remember what's in the Middle East is the very last one. Uh, that's if U.S. or, or ally attacking defending. Uh, yes, yeah, so you have an ally. Um, no, because they're estranged. Well, they're still your ally. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, so if U.S. are ally attacking, defending, and the total of Russia-China combined influence counters in the region is two or more, um, it is, yeah, I have two. Um, yeah, yep, I have two, two or more. Yeah, I have three. Okay. So Actually. you're going to get a plus one to the, to the combat roll. Okay. 
And so ground combined. Okay, so that's gonna be the top one. So so we're gonna get a plus one and we're gonna go ahead and roll. See what happens with this how this roll. I haven't done too many of these, uh, uh Gene, just to let you know, I haven't run through many war ops and options. So no worries. I've been lucky, I've been lucky oh. on that part. So I got a five plus one, so it's a five to six or five to seven. I'm trying to help you, Tony, not yep. be critical at all. Oh, no, no, no. No, I appreciate it. Some of the stuff I've gotten, and but I have to do it over a couple times to really understand it. And I've done cool. a lot of the stuff over, but I've yet to really do this. So, <laughs> Got it. Uh, so, uh, so this will be um, a one-to-one, -one, no moves, one attacker losses. After applying results, change air uh, combat, air ground war to guerrilla war. Okay, oh. so and yeah. so this guy's gonna flip down to a. Is he gonna? Oh nope, he's not. I gotta go get a new counter. He's gonna replace to a four. Yep. So this is not going well for Saudi Arabia and the Gulf. No, State. it is not. Nope. Uh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate your comment there with my role starting World You're War Three. <laughs> Yeah. And it becomes a guerrilla war. And, and you're proving it. <laughs> yeah, I am. I I tried to explain to my wife how you you said you've never uh, finished a game. I said, well, I, I said he's never finished a game. She's like, well, did he lose? I was like, well, yeah. He's he's like, then he finished the game. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um. Okay, so that's that. Um, do I have anything left to do on that war? If one, if neither side wins, no peace. That's well. That's what happens. The war continues. This war progress action is finished. You'll perform this process again during the next war progress segment. If the U.S. is involved, you may choose to immediately spend two. Well, okay, the U.S. is not involved, uh, so I don't need to worry about. It. If you spend, oh no, nope. no. Nope. Okay, so that is it. Tony. Yep. Yeah. Would you mind if I explain a little bit about how those war tracks work? Yeah, go right ahead. I have it zoomed in the middle there, so if you want to... Yeah, go uh, in a, just a tad closer, okay? Okay, yep. So where we just are, the idea is here, you can just see at a glance what's going on. So all the wars start at stalemate, and the results on the, on the combat table send you left or right by a number of boxes. When you get in the leftmost or the rightmost box, you win or you lose, you know, depending on who's playing, the attacker or defender. And so that's for um, ground air combat. When there's a guerrilla war, like, like ours just turned into, uh -huh. then you add boxes. So it doesn't take two boxes to win that war. It takes four boxes because you go down into the left and back up to the four box and down into the left and finally back up to the five box. So it's how we represent the guerrilla wars just dragging on. Yeah, they they guerrilla wars don't end quickly. That is historically a fact. <laughs> uh, also, on that one. So. Also, the uh, the results on the combat charts are they don't move as much for a guerrilla war as they do for the other types of wars. Yeah, I wish I could. I, w I wish I could show this, but they have so for each type of war. So if you look over the type of conflict, wow. it's air war and then air and missile war, naval war, combined war, guerrilla war. Um, they have different results for each one of those types of war. So you, you and and as you said, the guerrilla war. There's not much moving on the guerrilla war, the guerrilla war side for sure. Unless so there's you, a, lot of, a lot of attrition that way, and there's, you know, one of the possibilities on the combat charts is that uh, both sides just make peace. Essentially, they're exhausted, mm -hmm. and, and they make peace. That ca that can't happen on the first roll like we just had. It's got to go for a while first. But that happens yeah. more often when you have a guerrilla war. Okay, I yeah, that's which would make sense. They're just so tired of they're like, okay, we'll 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 do an armatrice, armatrice, or something like that. Yes, yeah, so yeah, and one of the one of the U.S. actions um, that you can take if you want diplomatic action is to try to broker peace, and that um, in a case where an ally is not doing real well right now, um, you could use actions to increase their strength to basically resupply them if you. We, first, we have to get our relationship up because right now we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could increase that to try to improve the odds. Or you could look at it and say, this is a big fat mess. And you could try to broker peace. 
Oh yeah, I yeah, I just haven't had a chance to try it yet. No, no, <laughs> no like, I'm just yeah, to I know. Yeah, yeah. Sense of how it works. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely one of those. Some of the comments um, that were made and have come up on when we've talked about it on the war room was like we always talk about learning how to play the game, but learning how to play the game you know like you can learn the mechanics and in this one i feel like you get the mechanics pretty quickly it's just the other part of how like when you use what at the best i think is it's gonna take some time to really to really break that down which is i think it's a good thing so okay you'll also notice one more thing answers you'll you'll also notice one more other thing here you'll notice there's only uh, room for five wars if you get to number six like tony's on his way through. <laughs> uh it's an automatic loss it's not a good thing <laughs> oh yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes so now i've got uh, so i'm done with my allies which um my uh great ally in uh the gulf states in saudi arabia decided to start a war on me so i appreciate that so now i get the rogue activations oh lucky uh, you yeah, I know. Now comes the 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 one part that's going to be interesting on this one. So, because I do have two rogue states. Oh, also, once you run out of rogue states, that's another way to lose the. Uh, that's yeah, <laughs> that's another way to lose the game. Okay, uh, roll a d10. Okay, so let's roll a d10 here. Uh, that's a two. So on a one to five. The highest level game created rogue state acts. Choose randomly if more than one uh, same level. Okay, they're both level ones. So what we're going to do is I'm going to roll for uh, one. Was it one to five uh, for the Middle East rogue state, and then six to ten on the Central South America. So I get a five. So it's going to be the Middle East rogue. Oh, I. You know what? I totally forgot to do something on this, guys. And um, I've got to turn in my flipped counters, tension counters, and draw back up one. That's right. I forgot about that. I'm glad I left those out and open so it was easy to to do. So, okay. Okay. There we go. I felt so bad that your ally started a war without you that I decided <laughs> to let you slide on the tension. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so um, so it's going to be the rogue act. So we're going to go to use the act uh, rogue activation process on the allies and rogues. W A three, which I've got right here because it's right on the page previously. Okay, perform this process for each rogue state counter on the map. Well, we're just going to do it not on the map in this case. It's just the Middle East. If level one or level two rogue state is at war, only do A. Well, they're not at war. Nope. That's uh, that would be the one that's in Central and South America. Okay. Uh, or Central South Asia, CSA. Um, so if rogue state is at war, do only A. If level three or four is at, do A and B. Uh, if rogue state is not at war do only b so b is place a trending u.s counter on the region's alignment track anti-us oh. anti did i say what did i say <laughs> i was trying to make it better you okay. were being hopeful i was being hopeful okay trending anti well because i already have an anti one there already so that gets put away over here and um, that goes down and then but the region stability stays there at five okay then roll a d10 applied as shown minus two if the rogue state has one ap counter on it it does not so it's just a straight d10 roll and i'll be honest with you guys watching once you guys see the sheets and the and the charts a lot of this will make sense and you'll be like oh okay that's why he did what he did so that's that's it's one of those things on that one okay fan the flames really <laughs> plus one to regional crisis okay yeah we're gonna do something about the middle east regional crisis aren't we i gotta do that i gotta take care of well that's the worst one um i got a lot of twos though so yep that's gonna be definitely something okay so the rogue states are done let me just check to make sure 
that that's it. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's done. So we're done with that phase. No. We do the and final action. Go back to W. W A four and find. Oh, okay. There it is. The bottom. Check the unstable states to finish the segment. Okay, I do have a couple of unstable states. Okay. It tells, you, you, it tells you which regions, Tony. All I see is it just says I might have a diff I might have page, older page, page twelve at the bottom. Um Oh well, there it is. Okay, yeah, I was on the I was on the I was on the page previously at that one. Okay, roll a D ten for each Central South Asia. Uh, so I've got one of those. And the Asia Pacific, which I do not have any there. Nice. So just the Central South Asia one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, roll a D10. Um, unfortunately, plus one, if the region stability is less than five. It is not less than five. It is five, but it's not less than. Uh, so it's going to be a straight roll on the 10 because it's not a 6, 7, or 8. Correct. So, so let's just go roll this. Uh, hope for a 1 to 3. And it's a 7. That's not going to be good. Well, it's not horrible. It's not horrible, but... It's going to flip funny. it over to uh, no, Civil keep, War. Could, no, keep it. no, no. Keep unstable state on now. Oh, 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 I was, I was, th see, I'm so used to this game messing with me. <laughs> I missed, I went down on the wrong way. look for the worst result. Yeah, you? yeah, I knew it was an 11 plus, you know, but okay, so that one's, so nothing happens, basically. Okay, so that's nothing good. Happened. Okay, you know what, in this game, I have found nothing happened is just as good as, is just as good as good, so that's a good something happening a lot of times. <laughs> so... Okay, so we are done with that segment now. So we are going to uh, go on to, uh, let's see here, POTUS Cabinet Focus, which is the bottom part of that. So refer to the POTUS Cabinet Focus section on the game map. Okay, let's take a look here. You could, oh, probably, some... also, you could probably, probably also look at the flip book if you want to, Tony. Oh, yeah, let me, yeah, I can um, show that. I, to I, I, I flipped it for you. Oh, did you? Okay. So then all I'll do is hit. So we are at the top. So refer to the POTUS cabinet focus section on the game map. Begin with the POTUS cabinet focus priority six and continue uh, to number five and so on until you complete uh, number one. Roll a D6 for each focus priority. Except do not roll for any focus priority that has a tension counter next to it. These priorities have been shuffled aside for now by the press and other crises and events. Okay. If the result on the D6 roll fails within the range limit of the POTUS cabinet focus priority counter for that focus priority, immediately apply the results uh, to the success effect the area, um, according to the following chart, if it is uh, does not fall within the range. Now, if I remember right, is this is this part actually on the map as well? Is that yes. chart on the map? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of nice. And then, okay, so this is the success effect. And then you have attention on five and six. Yep. And four. So you can't roll for any of those. Yep. So I can't, for my cabinet effectiveness, I can't do anything or public and press relations, which, by the way, my media or relations is like the at the bottom level. <laughs> so uh, I'm not very good with the press right now. They don't they don't seem to to like me. So all that has to change. OK, let's go ahead. So we're going to start with we so we can't do six, five. So we do four. Nope, you got oh. one. On, you got one on four. Yeah. Oh, I got one on four. Oh, geez. Yep. You uh, start with three. The, okay. Here's my D six. I need a D six. So we're starting with three. So this should be a success. One to three. Let's go ahead and roll this. Of course, it's not. Nope. Oh. How about, how about okay. two? Two. One to four. You can roll that. There you go. Ah, oh, I got a three. Okay. 
So, uh, place an improving economy marker on the U.S. SOE track. Okay, so we go down to the U.S. SOE track, and I'm going to put a improving economy marker on that. And basically, what what he just did was he set his uh, POTUS agenda, what they were you know focusing on, and the economy was number two on his list. Number one being homeland security being number one priority so your odds get better on the your number one twos and threes mm -hmm. you're more focused on those tasks oh let's go to number one i'll probably roll a six on this one yeah you said it uh, well, no i rolled a five so decreased one terror group in the u.s by one level if none, plus one to the Homeland Security and minus two to public approval. That's perfect. So I can get rid of that terror group there. Yep. Oh, that's nice. I don't, And I'm not going to have to use an action to get rid of it either. There you go. Homeland Security came through for you. Yeah, this time I put it as number one and it actually came through. I appreciate that. So, okay. So now, tension counters. Anytime the game instructs you or... Okay. So yeah, so attention counter anytime you place uh attention counter on a POTUS cabinet focus. Do I have to do anything? Yeah, it, you're gonna remove one tensions from the highest priority that has one. Okay. Okay. Domestic okay, I see I see it now. So it's um so that'll be taken one off four. Okay. So which um yeah, four is up here. Okay, so this one goes away. So, Tony, can I talk about that just for a second? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. So, there's a lot. You know, originally we had a whole bunch of stuff in the domestic side of this game, and it just it took even longer. So, we tried to figure a slick way to show the effort that you make on the domestic side, what how you prioritize it, and then let those kind of give you some, some free benefits in the game. And free in the sense, like Tony said earlier, you don't have to spend an action to go get this. So there's really no right answer. Your game state's going to depend on how you want to put your priorities, how you want to set them. But you set them every year. And then twice in the year, you kind of find out how you're doing with those. And they're set up so that your highest priority, the, the backstory meaning that you're spending the most time and effort and putting your best people on that, well, you've got an 83% chance with a one to five die roll to have a positive effect there. And those decrease all the way down to your sixth priority where you only have a one in six chance uh, that that will work. And then on top of that, when you start getting tensions from other things that happen in the world, you start placing those on your priorities, starting with six, five, four, three, and so on. The idea being that, you know, you've got your plan, but you start getting hit in the mouth with all these other problems in the world and it, diverts you for, you have to divert people and resources and you start with your lowest priorities so that's what happened in this case we had three things that took our focus away and so the number six five and four priorities we didn't even roll for and and the other ones we did pretty well yeah two out of three of the ones they would it have been nice to have um all of them be able to go for because i could have used some help on some of the things that <laughs> with the lower progress but you know it is what it is, and I'll take what I got right now, so definitely. Uh, Michael, you were saying, uh, looks like the organizing of components is uh, well will be important. Yeah, I agree. If you have them organized it'll, and you know where you're going to have them at, it's going to work out a lot better for you for sure. Um, and the other thing is, uh, this side over here, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, because I don't want to say something and, and be wrong on it, but you will get an organizer, correct? Like You will. Yep. Okay. Yes, yes. Yep. There will be an eight, eight and a half by an 11 in the game where you can put your, your game components, your your counters that you're using. We also use draw cups a lot of times for... Like um, the tension counters. Yeah, the tension and the terror. Some of the things that have uh, numbers on the back, you can either stack them up there and pull one randomly from there, or you can drop them into draw cups, whatever you prefer. Yeah, so I did. I would. I do want to agree with that. Is and and honestly, 
well-organized games, you know, um, I'm a big Elton Brown fan. I like cooking. He says, organization will set you free. I think that works for a lot of games. If you have it, your stuff organized, things just go quicker as it is. Remember, okay. a, clean, a clean game is a happy game. <laughs> oh, okay. Not, Mike's not going to like my piles on that. On that play. <laughs> Trust me, when I'm videoing, I'm like extra organized on my on my stuff, and then all of a sudden, like if I'm not videoing it, it's kind of like I got a pile here, I got a pile there. Yeah. I, I bought draw cups just to keep everything organized on a lot of different things. So, okay, so we are moving on. Um, so let's go take a look at the flip book here. And we are going to decrease media relations and perform two domestic actions. This is where I actually get to start kind of coming back. I get to start reacting to what's going on. Uh, now, the domestic actions we'll have to take a look at because domestic, of course, is U.S. So it might be more working with my media relations, things like that. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to perform... Uh, we're going to go try to drop this media relations even more than it already is. <laughs> um, oh, it can't go any farther. Okay. Well, so. that's the good news, Tony. You made it as <laughs> mad as you can there make you it. Go. There's the bright side. Yep. So, okay. So let me get my domestic action, master actions chart that I have here. So these are things that I can do to uh, stimulate the economy. I can amass to, uh, address domestic crises, so crisi, crisis, the crises or crises. I can't remember. I, guess I don't it's crises. I like crises. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, which mm, you know, it is what it is. And it's not horrible, but it's not great. Uh, I can address uh, a lingering domestic issue that's here. Uh, and you don't want this track because you see this nice little auto loss feature right here. <laughs> so as it goes down, you don't want to be doing that. I can improve my relations with Congress. So let's take a look at my relations with Congress. Um, so my relations with Congress is eh, not bad, not great, not bad. So, you know, right in the middle. Um, and then I could party fundraising and support. And what's nice about these charts, and I do appreciate um, you guys putting this, there's the why. Why would you do this action? So I do appreciate that being put into these action charts because sometimes you're like, well, why would I party fundraise? What, what's yeah, the point? To, to let people know, he's looking that each, um, there are four different uh, player aids, two sided, that have all of your different actions that you can perform. And each one has a cost and where and why answers for you on each one. Yeah, so, okay, uh, back to, uh, so I can track terror, target, and CONUS. Well, nicely, my home security took care of that. Homeland security took care of that for me, you, so I do you, appreciate you that. You have the domestic crisis issues and lingering domestic issues. Yeah, so I can raid terror. I can remove a ten, one tension counter from uh, the POCUS, POTUS focus cabinet. Um, it can encourage bipart bipartisanship in Congress, or I can discredit or dissuade a congressional opponent. Um, so, honestly, not going to really do that. We're going to uh, take care of the domestic crisis that are in here, um, and then the hopefully the uh, lingering issues. Now, uh, the domestic lingering issues, um, I can only take this action if the crisis level is at zero. So I got to get the crisis level down. And to do that, I need to roll a D10. Uh, and it will cost one action. So I get two. So we're going to do one action. I get to roll a D10. Um, and I do have some DRMs. And I don't, I'm going to go ahead and roll and do it. If there's APs, I always call, declare the APs first before I roll. But um, this one I can't use. But I, uh, ooh, I can minus the number of vice president or chief of staff's domestic rating. Okay, so my vice president, it's domestic, state, and military defense. DMD, yeah. correct? Domestic, diplomatic. Military. Diplomatic. DD, yeah, DDM. Okay, that's right. So domestic, so Barry Wallace is a one, which is my um, 
which is my vice president. And my chief of staff is also a one, so I can get a minus one for sure on that. Um, but And that'll probably take care of the plus one I'm going to get for my lingering domestic issues. So that's a net zero. My public approval is not at 60% or higher. At least I'm pretty sure of that. Um, I think that's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> eh, 26, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> Um, and then, um, uh, what, are your POTUS, one, what are your POTUS attributes, Tony? I forgot from last time. Uh, POTUS attributes, um, uh, efficient, and I'm an orator. Okay, that's not going to help you here, but nope. Uh, so basically, it's a net zero, so it's yep. just a, a, it's just a d10 roll here. So we're going to roll, I get a 10. That's bad. That is really bad. You made it worse. <laughs> Rachel, what do you think? Uh, how's the how's the die rolling going for me? Uh, <laughs> okay, oh. so I made it worse. Increase the domestic crisis track by one. Okay, that puts me up to two. At least it wasn't uh, LDI. But my public and my public approval will drop by two. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this one again. <laughs> I've got to now. Uh, uh, but it looks like it's still a net zero. Okay, here we go. Four. That is it. Uh, so I got to go decrease. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, against the cabinet effectiveness track. Hey! I passed. Hey. Where'd it go? So... I basically reversed what I just did. Yeah, you did. But you're taking one public approval. Well, I lost. Wait. Oh, yeah. I lose? oh well, I lost two. So yeah, I should have been on 22. Two. So, yep. So I lost two, but gained one. Yeah. So. Okay. Ugh. You know what? Let's. let's uh, uh, so Rachel said she's. it's pretty bleak, but she's done worse. So. I testify I've, that that is true. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling another chit, and I do a regional summit. Okay, let me uh, move this out of the way here. Regional summit. Okay, now. Okay, regional summit. Roll a d10 to determine which region has the crisis. I wait a minute. Oh, that's a random crisis. Sorry. Oh, that's the wrong one. Um. Regional summit. Oh, sorry, I was reading the wrong one. See, I go for the worst looking thing. <laughs> uh, refer to the regional summit on WD5. So that's World Chart Book. Uh, WD2. Sorry, not five. WD2 here. Okay. Uh, when you draw the regional summit shit, draw a D10 to randomly determine the region summit. Okay. No, DRMs and decide whether... Okay, I'm just making sure I'm reading through this part just to make sure. Okay, refer to the regional summit table and the world charts booklet depending on which crisis chit you drew and follow its directions. Note the DRMs Note the DRMs and decide whether to commit a presidential AAP before you roll the D10 to determine the summit's results. Okay, so I've got to roll... I've got to roll a d10 to figure out where i'm going and if you're just jumping in and this is the first time you've been watching this um i'm going to just run over to the world over here the world map and if you look at the top of each region there's a d10 there with a number so i'm going to roll a d10 and whichever one i roll that's the region we're going to have a summit about so we're going to go ahead and roll one here and i get an eight so in this case our regional summit is about africa so we've got our Africa continent right here. Okay, um, roll a D. Okay, so determine the type of summit in the following by following the criteria in a hierarchy. Okay, if the regional crisis is selected in the selected region is two or higher, it is. Or if there is a war, there's no war, level four terror group, or 
any level rogue state in the region. Well, it's um, it's a region two, so so it's going to be a regional crisis. So which one is it? A oh, security summit. So it's going to be a security summit. Okay, so that's so there's security summits, there's economic and trade summit, and there's global issue summits. Those are the three different summits that you can do. If stability is four or less, okay. Well, is it the first one? Oh, in criteria. So if you get the first one, that's the one you use. Okay. Right. Yep. So we got a security summit. Yep. Uh, let's see. So DRMs generally because there's presidential APs. Time out, Tony. Yeah. F finish that top part because you're going to okay. make the regional alignment check. Oh, then roll the regional alignment check. Okay, got it. Thank you. How well do um, they like you? Yeah, roll a D10, make a regional alignment check for that region. Uh, pass is a minus one DRM below. Fail is a plus one. Okay. Well, it is a five is regional alignment. A three, so I failed yeah. that, correct? Yeah, you love that. Wow. Dang it. Come on, Tony. Can't even roll a die. Okay, anyway, so good. minus one. You love that. It was good. Oh, it's oh, is it less or is it less? Yeah, so our alignment okay. check is less than or equal to the value. So you passed. Okay. Okay. I pass. Oh, that would make sense because you're better at eight and it's easier to get those right. checks in. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Okay. It's equal to or less than. Okay, so I passed that. Okay, so I rolled good, finally. Uh, so I passed. So I get a minus D run. Check the DRMs below, then roll a D10 to figure out. So I already get a minus one. Uh, let's see. I have quite a few APs. Why not? Let's go ahead. We'll spend one AP. So that's two minus two. Uh, minus one per very close ally. I don't have any allies in Africa. Uh, plus one if there is a current war, level four terror group, or any rogue state. I don't have any of those. <coughs> Excuse me. And plus or plus one or plus two if there's at least one China or Russia influence, plus two of both. So I'm going to get a minus one because there is a China influence. So I get a minus run of this die roll to see what happens. And I get a nine minus one is an eight. Okay. And there's two asterisks here. Only if there is China or Russia influence marker in the region. Well, there is a China Russian. So China or Russia provide security guarantees and assistance. Really? Minus one to the regional crisis. That well, sounds good. That's that, that I'm going to stop there, Gene, and just call <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, they helped you. I'm, I'm, good, at, I'm good at doing that. I'm very yeah. good at stopping when, when it starts to go bad for me. <laughs> they helped you for a second. Okay. Uh, place a new influence marker in the region for that nation that gave the assistance. If neither China. So uh, China. Okay, so I'll get another China influence. And that'll move China up to 10 on the influential scale. And where's my... Oh, they're up here. Here it is. Ooh, man. Yeah, China's getting powerful. Yeah, China's... Uh... Let me count how many we got. One, two, three, because I might have not updated this correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, I'm at right at ten. Yep, I only see ten. Okay. So I am correct on that one, but that's getting close to Chinese victory. Damn it. Yes, sir. Cannot have that one. Okay, so that's all for the regional summit. Okay. Um, move counter. Okay, sweet. Let's go ahead and move the counter and go on to the next turn. Um, and if you guys notice, the things are moving a lot faster here. Um, so that's which is really cool. Uh, once you start getting kind of the routine of the game, it really does start moving smoother. Uh, but of course, I have to tell a story. Okay. Oh, we're not in the legislature. Wait a second. Did you? Um, at national focus. Uh, did you skip legislative se section? Um, it's not on here. I think that. You oh, did. I did. I did. 
I missed that one. Yep. You were right. Well, luckily that should not affect the uh, chit shouldn't affect that part. So I got, I got excited. Okay. Perform a legislative segment. So we're actually going to do some legislative stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, perform the following legislative. Determine the support opposition to pending bills. If no bills, skip the step. I don't think I have any bills pending. No, no bills. Nope. No bills pending. Okay. Attempt to pass. Well, we're going to skip that. Um, attempt to pass a bill um, or apply the DRM. So that's all part of two. Sign or veto bills. If no bills are passed, skip to four. Add legislative friends or opponents. If you pass and sign a landmark bill only, add. Uh, well, we skip that. Um, how the sausage is made. Okay. Roll 1d6 and refer to the Congressional Maneuver and Drama Table in the Domestic Charts Book. Okay. That, hey, I get to do something here. Yes, you do. Uh, domestic Charts Book. Uh, oh, it's here. It is. And that, what was that? That was uh, D6. D6. Okay. D6. Hey, Kev, how's it going? We're going to watch me very, very, very bad at uh, being a president. So, <laughs> okay. During step five of the legislative process, roll 1D6, apply DRMs max plus or minus three, and immediately apply the results. If the current bipartisan cooperate, co cooperation is in the leftmost, make a second rule thereafter. Well, it is not in the leftmost. It is in the middle. So it'll only be one rule. When adding a congressional friend or opponent, use the congressional friends and opponents rule in the governing manual uh, for that. Okay. Oh, uh, where's the DRMs? Here they are. Okay. Um, uh, minus one, if bipartisan cooperation is in the rightmost box, it is not. Plus one, if it is in, in the either two leftmost boxes, it is not. So there's a net there. Minus one, if relations with Congress is seven or greater, it is at five. Uh, it's down here. Um, let me move it down just a little bit or a lot. <laughs> Uh, plus two, if it is three or less, it is not. Uh, minus one, if my public approval is greater than 60%, it is not. Plus two, if it's less than 30 unfortunately, I get a plus two on that one. Uh, minus one, if friends outponent, uh, outnumber opponents, they do not. Uh, my, I have equal friends right here. Yep. Um, and plus one if the opposite, so that's neither we have equal. And plus two if this is the second rule of the step due to pi uh, bi 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 bipartisan cooperation being in the nope. leftmost. So I basically have a plus two on the D10. Okay. So the best I can get is a three. And so let's go ahead and roll. Plus two. Oh, I know this isn't good. Yep. Corruption. <laughs> Go to the strand scan scandal track on the map and roll on the random scandal determination to find the target for the investigation. Okay, let's this is probably only my second scandal, so and I think you guys changed it since the last time I had to do it. So okay, so I'm gonna roll a D six and figure out who is part of my scandal. There we go. One, the chief of state, uh, chief of staff. Okay. So that's it. Place the effective scandal counter on the breaking scandal. So that would be chief of staff on the breaking scandal part. If there's already a scandal, then randomly select the target. Okay, there isn't one. Um, uh, really? Minus one to party relations. Um, minus one relations with Congress. This is not good. Um, <laughs> no. Minus three to public approval. 
Uh, minus five. Oh, my God. One, two, oh. three. Uh, okay. <laughs> Gene, I hate this game. <laughs> well, I, I guess this is oh. this, this is where you kick me off, right? No, we're good. I'll just it's, 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 kick him out. <laughs> I can easily just hit the button. No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I like to show everybody what not to do. Let's 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 go with this. Is what you don't do. Okay. I think I think we'll go with that one. Hey, hey Tony, you need to promote me so I can disable oh, the, I, flip, the flip table. Oh, <laughs> oh, you are promoted by the way. I already did that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe disable the flip, the flip table. Oh, I I did that once on accident. I'm never gonna do it again. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, uh, Michael, forget impeachment. Tony's working on firing squad. Yeah, working on is. getting the firing squad, not just impeachment, but being fired. But on uh, in the firing squad. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, and then a scandal. Okay. Uh, plus three. Well, why couldn't it have been a congressional opponent? You know, why couldn't it have been that? Oh, well, that's so... Okay, so that legislative part's done. Uh, so now we're on to the focus. Okay. <sighs> oh, boy. Okay. Oh, wait. I got to see if there's more on the on the legislative yeah, there, part. Yeah. There is. There is. There is. Of course there is. Okay. Introduce new bills. Remove all bills currently in the cannot be passed box. There aren't any and place them in the unused bills box. You may now voluntarily remove any of your not opponent bills currently in any box in the pending bill section. There isn't any because you can never have more than five bills in the pending bill section. You'll sometimes want to remove a bill or two that are lower priority to make it distant. The number of the current box in the bipartisan cooperation section is the number of bills you may now introduce okay oops uh, if you control both houses of congress you choose which bills to introduce if your opponents control both houses of congress your opponents choice is legislation for the bills not yet pending or passing that is the highest priority if the control is split use a d6 to see who gets to choose the first bill to introduce even me, odd opponents. Then mm -hmm. alternate parties until you've made an indicated number of attempts. Okay, place the bill or bills you or the opponent have introduced in the zero box. Okay, so I can only do one. So whoever gets to choose. Okay. Yep. I think okay. you're split too, aren't you? Yeah, I'm split, so I have to roll it. So on the map if there is a split control of congress placing the bill bills in the minus one box if introducing by the party controlling both houses of congress uh so it's going to go in the zero box uh so that'd be right for the pending bills okay so uh let's go ahead and roll so it's even me odd it's my opponents here's my d6 and we are going to roll a six hey i get to choose all right okay Finally, something I get to do. I'm not going to choose the wrong one. I guarantee I'm going to choose the wrong one. So my public is gun legislation. My administrative is gun legislation. So I'm going to choose bill number nine. I'll bet it's gun legislation. <laughs> gun legislation. That is correct. Okay, nice choice. Ah, you know, I, I, I can do some things, you know, when they're that obvious. Okay. So. Uh, so uh, at least I got to choose, you know, hey, you know, I got to choose. Okay. Okay. Determine the meter result. Total the number. Oh, total. Then compare the media ratings of all friends and opponents. Then move the public approval that number of boxes with a max of three boxes. I think they cancel each other out, by the way. Uh, no, they don't. That's not going to be good. Okay. I've already, I'm kind of peeking ahead. Um, tie, uh, if there's a tie, it's no change. If the result is the max plus or three boxes for or against the player, also adjust media relations by one box higher for plus three or one box lower for plus, minus two. Well, I can't go any lower. <laughs> you got that going for you. Yeah. Uh, so in this an case, Tony, there's an opportunity. You know what? It is even. 
I have a media of friends of three, and a media of opponents is three. So they're they're tied. Nice. So again, sometimes having nothing happened is a good thing. So yeah, so that's just kind of if it's a tie, there's no change. So okay. Uh, scandal or investigation? <laughs> Roll a d6 for each scandal on the scandal track, starting in the concluding scandal box. Refer to the scandal table on d14 in the domestic charts booklet and apply results. Then move left and repeat to that process until all scandals are resolved. Okay. Well, I've got one scandal. Um, so d14. I have d14. You sank my battleship. Yeah, Maybe I should play that. I might actually win. Really? <laughs> uh, okay, D14. Here we go, D14. Okay. Are there any DRMs? Yes, there are. So let's go through the DRMs. Uh, minus one. Okay, so that doesn't matter because that's the next two because it's in the middle. Relations of Congress is six or greater or four or less are the results. Let's take a look. I think it is five. No, it's four or less. So four or less is a plus one. Um, Pluses are never good. Plus two, because my... So I'm at plus three, because my public is less than 30. Um, and party relations is at a four. So I'm at the max anyway. So plus three. Okay, here we go. Plus three um, on a D6. That does not sound good. It's not. Okay, here we go. Rolling. <sighs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Breaking scandal, so I look underneath that one. New evidence suggests deeper. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is great this is wonderful new evidence suggests deeper potus involvement minus one presidential ap's oh man minus one presidential ap's i'm down to 12 uh minus two public approval well that's already down there uh in the shitter um and then minus one relation with Congress that drops that down to a three. Okay. Um, You're not real POTUS, popular, Tony. Oh my God. If POTUS is already on the scandal track, move it right one box. If not already on the scandal track, place it in the breaking scandal box oh. and immediately make a scandal roll for the POTUS. Oh my God. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is interesting. Well, you wanted to see a scandal, Tony. Here you go. I, cr I, I was, I knew I shouldn't have said that. I knew it yeah. as soon as I said it. I knew I shouldn't have said it. And, uh, and, and Gene, Gene, didn't you say this is when I'm supposed to be doing stuff to counteract? Yeah. It sure doesn't seem like. Well, it. I said that good players did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did preface that. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. Oh, no, 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 no. I just, it's so funny. Okay. So now I've got to roll on the scandal track again uh, for the president. If current scandal target was not POTUS, it remains. Okay. So the Secretary of State or Chief of Staff stays there, but POTUS. It's going to be plus three. Yep. Yeah, yeah it is. Don't it's roll. Be plus three. You just did. You just did that math. Yep. And let's roll this die. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's doing the happy dance right now. Yeah, she's, she's like uh, maybe. She's like maybe I'm not the worst die roller yeah, in the world. Yeah. Match. yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. If Potosani already counter track, move it right one box. It is now. Well, you still have to lose an AP and all that oh, stuff. Yeah, I can't lose anything else other than the AP. Okay. Um, well, no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> oh, my no. relations with Congress can go down one more. 
Sure it can. Why wouldn't it? Okay. <laughs> um, if current scandal target was not put it, okay. If not, already on scandal to place breaking. Okay, so that's done with that. Well, look right after the minus one WRC. That's that's where you are. Yeah. Well, if POTUS was already on the counter track, move it to the right one box. I did that, so now it's okay, uh, so you're deepening. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Sorry. Uh, what's the impeachment date? When does? Oh, you can get impeached. You don't want to find out what that is. <laughs> I have a feeling I may find out sooner rather than later. Okay, back to the legislative. Oh my God! Aren't you glad we did this legislation process? Oh, we could have skipped this. Like, for, yeah, we could have skipped this. Okay. <laughs> A just bipartisan cooperation. Examine all friends and opponents. If there are more moderates than radicals, move uh, cooperation right by one. Um, there are... It's an equal number. Okay. So that probably means nothing. No yep. move. Otherwise, no change. Okay. Again, I'll take that as a positive. We'll, we're going to take all these little positives. Okay, legislate for momentum. Perform one immediate no. free action of any type in your not opponent bills that were passed and signed during this activation. Well, I didn't pass or sign any. Okay. Okay. Activation segment is now done. That was horrible. <laughs> oh my. All right. I'm going to skip ahead. You've already, you've already done the draw the price shit, right? Mike, yeah, I already did the crisis chat. Yep, I had Mike, that security summit one. that went crap. I haven't seen one in a while where one of the key cabinet guys was had a scandal and then it deepened and the president popped in. Oh, <laughs> and, the, and the bad thing, Tony, is Congress hates you as much as they could hate you. And the public hates you as much as they could hate you. So they're just going to keep on investigating. Yeah, 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 and the media hates me too. It's, it's, oh yeah, let's not leave them out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Oh, I want to work on your um, media and public relations a little bit. Yeah, I think that I think I'm gonna need to be working on that. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Uh, okay, perform focus national intelligence. So that's where we're at. So. Uh, the focus national intelligence collection counters representing the settings national priorities for national intelligence resources and capabilities, which cross all 18 members of the intel community and six collection signatures. Uh, signals, imagery, measuring, human resource, open source, geospatial, political, those types of things. Although U.S. intelligence capabilities are large and robust, there are still limits to their capacity to collect and process information into intelligence for the White House. Hence, the game gives you the maximum of two FNI counters to prioritize among the eight world regions. Okay, but my economy's good. I just realized that. I might still get elected. My economy's good. You're I'll right. take credit for that. I'm going to take credit for that. I can't do much else, but I'll take credit for that. Okay. If you have an exceptional White House staff resource card that superstars in the NCS staff, that during this focus, uh, national intelligence, you may use this card to perform one free Intel or SF rate. Uh, what is mine? I think that actually might be it. It is. No, that's Homeland Security. Okay. Okay. That'll help when I get. Oh, that's start of turn two. I might not even make it through turn two, to turn one, let alone. <laughs> Okay, number two, roll on the focus national intelligence collection table for each region that has an FNI counter to determine the effect of your focused intel in that region. You may then move the counters to a new region. I think I only have one out right now uh, due to the situation. Yeah, I only have one out, and it's in the Middle East where it'll probably stay. There's just too much going on in the Middle East. Okay, um, minus one, if the strategic... Uh, Recon Intel gathering strengths capability is higher than Russia or China. It, my retail, it's not higher. Oh, it is higher than both. Yes. So I get a minus one. 
Minus one is cyber warfare strategic capability is higher. Um, cyber warfare is not. They're actually higher than me. Um, plus one if either Russia or China has influence counter in the region or their cyber security or s cyber strategic capability is greater than that of the U.S. Uh, I have one of each in there, so that's going to be a plus one. So it's a minus one, plus one, so it's a net nothing. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and roll. So it's a straight roll on the D10. Eight. Effects on terrorism. Move level, move a level two, three, or one in that priority terror group in the region to the locating box. Um, it is already on the locating box. So since I'd have to put the two up there, wouldn't I? Yeah. Highest, highest yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There we go. Hey, that wasn't too bad. Yep. Okay. There we go. Mm, okay. Here we go. Let's. Uh, so that's that's it. Because I'm not going to move. I could move my national focus intel column collection. I'm not going to. Um, so we've got, we're, we're on to the next part. That's right, 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 yep. Okay. Yeah, rolling the focus. You may move the counters to a new region in the world if you wish. I am done with that. Okay, so we're moving on to one action for POTUS in each of the ca cabinet member. Oh, that's activation phase three. Um, okay, so we are at four diplomatic or military actions that's not what i need by the way i need no. domestic actions or presidential actions i don't need diplomatic or military actions but well, well unfortunately you do need those two yeah tony yeah. one one thing of note is yeah. that you can always when you're called to make actions you know three or four or whatever it is and they give you a certain type you can always spend two ap's to get one additional action of any type. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That That's okay. So it gives you that option. It's like it penalizes you, but you could use it. For yeah. It helps players really get need. out of tight spots when you really need a certain kind of action. Okay. I kind of I like that. It's like it gives you the option. It does penalize you, but it does give you an option to do that. Uh, and I think I read that, um, but I ran across it. So I do appreciate that. The, the other thing I would say, Tony, is don't give up. Oh, yeah. Um, no. This game this game can spiral, and sometimes you get you, – you know you're going to lose. But a lot of times, like you look over there in the, in the third activation phase, and you get a one-action POTUS and all your cabinet advisors again, like you did at the start, where you get all those actions. Oh, yeah. Yep. Four military. You get more domestics. You get any three at the start of that. So you've got a lot of actions coming. Yeah, just there's there's a lot to go. And it's just it's just funny how this happens, but if you look realistic, does it ever is it it does equal out, but it takes time. You gotta look, this is like a three month period, or yeah, this is like a three month period. So generally when shit hits the fan, it doesn't like just go away. It stays for a while. Yeah, and, you're not you're not yep. winning the first three months for sure. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you can lose in the first three months, but you can <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely not winning. Um, and I don't really think you could lose that quickly. Um, I, I don't well, want to say that. I'm afraid it, to say that now. <laughs> when it starts going kind of bad like this, I mean, you can, you may be just kind of stuck on managing the scandal track for right now, but yeah, you look around and you're, you're basically in the let's not make it worse mode. So mm -hmm. you, you look at those, uh, now, now you've got some foreign uh, yeah. diplomatics. Yeah. So you look at those places like the Middle East that has a three. Yeah. Try, yeah. try to stay away from the multipliers where this goes to a, uh, mm -hmm. a major crisis and then lots of bad stuff happens all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's exactly where I was headed was crisis relief in the Middle East. That was that was going to be uh, right where I was going to go with that. So. Uh, okay, my Secretary of State rating. Let's see. That is 
diplomatic, and I got a zero. So that's right. My Secretary of State was the only one that did not um, help me, like, number-wise. So. <laughs> I like that. Captain Captain Carl said, it can't seem to get any worse that it looks here. Although my managing anything would be like owning a bank and having Bonnie and Clyde manage it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, and, and then if you're super competitive, which I by, the, by no means am I that way, I some people might get over frustrated with stuff like this. But for me, it's like, okay. Let's see what I can do. Maybe, you know, maybe I won't be able to get to higher, like really high, but maybe I can pull it back and actually start making things go forward. So I always like, I always root for the underdog. And so let's, let's, let's see what we can do. If we can help somebody else out, we may not be able to help our own people out, but let's see if we can help some of these, you know, foreign, the foreign, uh, the foreign track. So we're going to do crisis relief. I get four actions for military and diplomatics. So I get four of those. Let's uh, do this just to make sure. Okay, four actions. Here we go. First one, crisis relief. Um, minus one if it's if region stability is less than six. Well, it is less than six, so I'll have a minus. Uh, oh, no, it's not. Let me reread that. Minus one if re region stability is six or higher. It's not. So it's just a straight D10 on this. I get a four. I get to decrease the region by one. Okay. So that's, that's pretty good. Yep. Okay. And let's take a look here. I just want to make sure. Uh, so things like removing the, um, I just want to make sure regional crisis uh, is here. Okay. So Asia Pacific, they have a lot of China influence, but they're not in crisis at all. Everybody else is not too bad, actually. Looking at this grand scale, other than, I mean, the only other two is the uh, Eastern Europe and Central South Africa. I feel like I should remove some of these China or Russian influence counters in the region. Because they always seem to add the multipliers to yeah, it. Yeah, especially when you get three of them, right? They're going to turn to a base. Yeah, so I've, I've, I think that's where I'm going to go for. Is over in Asia here, I've got three um, influence markers. I want to see if I can get rid of that. Um, I'll do that one. Okay, if the region has a uh, regional alignment of seven or eight, or six if crisis is at zero, well, crisis is at zero and it's at six, so I can do this. Yep. Uh, so I actually took care of Asia Pacific pretty well. I'm actually maybe I'm a foreign relations president, just not domestic. Yeah, I mean. Um, you're corrupt, but you're really good on the world stage. <laughs> um, so on a one to six, you may remove. Okay, let's go ahead and roll. There's no DRMs. Hey, four. All right. Yes. Look at you. The worm is starting to turn. Okay. All right. Um, so this drops us back down to nine. Yeah. Um, do I want to do that elsewhere? I don't that's, see military. Actions, right. Pardon? That's I got two more. Yeah, I got two more actions. Diplomatic and military. Uh, maybe the Middle East groups. Maybe I need to do some intel gathering on those two terror groups that are already in the good spot to do that. There you go. Yeah, let's do that. So I can um, direct intel gathering ops against two different terror groups. And I have a two and a three here so we're gonna go ahead and do that because like maybe i can move both of those into targeting and then take care of or help reduce them um so uh plus i have my all i have all my intel stuff there so i get some good modifiers uh so minus one if the u.s intel advisors counter in the region which it is and if the focus national intelligence which it is so i get a minus two on this one yeah, that's let's go that. So minus two, so that's my third action. Eight minus two, uh, it's still a uh, so that's a six. So that's a failure. Uh, that would be for this uh, number two because we're going top to bottom. So this will be for the number three. 
which would be the one I'd really want to pass. Hey, it passes. Success. Place the terror group into gathering intel. So he right. actually oops, he actually goes here and that two stays there. Okay. Now let's perform a raid. Let's go ahead and do that so we can kind of show this off. Okay. <clears throat> Cost one action. Um, choose between two actions. Perform an SOF raid on a terror group in a region. Target terror group must be in the target fixed box. Um which I believe that's what that's. Yeah, it is a target fix box. So we're going to go up to that three because I want to drop that down to a two as soon as quick, quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, perform that. Uh, roll a D10 and resolve the SOF table in WM10. Uh, uh, World shorts WM10. That's like at the back. T F uh, W M what was it again? W M two geez, there's no ten. Okay, W M two. There it is. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, SOF raid because I know it's a little bit more effective. I've done those enough. Um, so we're gonna roll a D ten. <clears throat> now let's take a look. What do I have in here? Uh, if there's U.S. Special Ops and U.S. Intel Raid Counter in the region, there is. So I have my Ops Special Ops right here, and I've got my Intel Advisors. So I get a minus one. Minus two if I have the Focused, which I do uh, right here. So that's minus two. Uh, minus two if the U.K., NATO, or Joint Ally Raid. Nope, that's not. Minus two if it's an Israeli Raid. Nope. Plus one if it is a level three or four terror group. It is a level three. So that brings it down to a minus one. Plus one if there is a combo total of three plus Russia and or China counters or a base. There are three. So basically uh, it's going to be a straight roll. Oh, no. no modifiers, unfortunately. But maybe we can help. Think it. Maybe that'll. Okay. Three. Oh, no. Usually low's good. Yeah. Success. There we go. Decrease terror group by one level. Move terror group to the gathering box on the intel. So uh, this flips over to four, right? Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. So this three goes in here. And this two will go here. Okay. And that was, that was my fourth action. Awesome. Okay. And if, if you wanted to spend those two APs, you could do one more of any type. But yeah, I think I'm going to hold off because I don't think one action is going to make a big difference right now. I think I need to have a. Um, yeah, I mean, LA. That's the yeah. sort of thing. If you saw something that was in imminent danger, danger. It might be yeah. Yeah, if something was like if I had a if I had something that was on next to an auto loss, or like if it was a major right next to the major crisis and I couldn't get rid of it, I have a feeling that's really where you want to use that. If I'm correct. Okay, so we are now on to activation phase two, and we're gonna keep going a little bit. Um. For that. Okay, just check in. You By the way, if you guys, uh, those that jump on, got any questions, let me know. Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to save a little time at the end if they have any questions for you. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and um, uh, we'll go ahead and do one, we'll do one pool, uh, one chit pool just to go from there. And then we'll we'll leave some because that's where I'm right at. So I'm just going to. I'll bet you can't do just one chit pool. No, I know. <laughs> It's well, like the Lay's. It's the Lay's commercial. I'm going to put you back up on top because you don't know if you're going to have to do the next one. Well, I just moved right. down there just to, uh, of course. What I do I got here? Yeah. There we go. No, let me look at that first. Yeah, yeah, it's going to go there anyway because you got to pull up. One plus one random regional crisis. Oh, yay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and roll three 
So that is going to be uh, Central America. Okay. You're right. I can't just roll one. I got to do the next one. <laughs> this one, we're going to stop on this one because I've got two cards, two cascading cards to pull. So, mm -hmm. so we'll pull those two and then we'll, we'll call it at that one right there. So we've got to pull two. So this will be the first one. Let's see. What do we got guys? Let's take a look here. Let's uh, flip this puppy over. Immediate remove. Whoa, wait a second. Saudis make major push into European oro market. Moscow fears at low prices and lost revenue. Okay. This might actually be, remove one Russian influence from either the Eurozone first priority or Eastern. Place two tensions on both Russia and on GS. Oh, wow. The Gulf state, really? They need more, more tensions? Um, of course they do. They're at war. Okay. So yeah, place the. Fight Yemen some more. Yeah. Uh, place improving uh, marker on the Eurozone and a worsening on Russia. Okay. So let's take this first thing. So I get to remove the. There is a Russian influence on the Eurozone. So we will gladly. That's a very good thing. Uh, yeah. Get rid of that one. So I just want to make sure I'm caught correctly on these. So I got one, two, three. Yep. Okay. So that drops that down to three. Okay. Okay. So that's the first part of that one. Place two tensions on both Russia and GSA. Okay. Uh, Russia already has um, two, so we will add to theirs. One. Oh, I did not mean that one. And then one more. Oops, that did not go. There we go. And then some more on GSA. Okay. And that might have a leaning tower of Pisa there soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then a worsening, oh, improving marker on the Eurozone. Uh, I'll take that, improving econ. And then a worsening on Russia. I don't like that. I don't like their economy being that low. Something tells me you want to have it right in the middle. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Okay. Don't get mad and, Oh, they, they tend to go try, try to cause problems in the world when their economy is not good. That's what I thought. That's that's the way I thought that was going to go. So definitely. It, so. It's, the, it's the look over there to all their citizens, you know, look somewhere yep. else. Don't look at our economy. So, oh, oh I just, okay. Oh, that's what that does. Okay. It's space bars. Like what the heck just happened? Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to uh, change this one. Okay. So. This was the chit draw, so this is where we are at. So, okay, that actually turned out to be a pretty nice card. Goes in the discard pile, which yeah, um, that, that didn't have hurt. It. That, that kind of helped you and didn't hurt you much at all. No, nope. No, this one will kill me probably. <laughs> that's that's always the way it goes. Okay, here we go. Let's flip this card over here. Oh, uh, flip. Oh. This is NGOs Unite to combat back. Okay, I've had some good cards here. You. Yeah. Reduce regional crisis marker by one in any two world regions. Oh, nice. Look at you. Okay. I know. No, that's... No. Hey, if it's a card, I can pull it. If it's a dice, I can't roll it. <laughs> okay. Um, where do I want to yeah. remove those? I, obviously, I think the Middle East, I want to get down to one. And... I think yeah, I'll 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 move uh, Central mm. South America down to one. Yeah, oh, one. thank you. Yeah, I totally forgot about that one. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Central America. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh. Okay. And this one goes into the reshell. I'll take that again. They can I can get that card again. I'll take that card like three times on Sunday if possible. So, so. Okay, so that's where we're gonna leave it uh, for tonight. Um, this is exhausting, by the way, guys. <laughs> if you if you've never done this, this is literally exhausting, but so much fun. So, uh, if you guys got any questions, any comments, uh, anything, just um, jump in. By the way, and I'm 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 gonna cost you some money here, Gene. Oh no! Get this on P five hundred now. It will be. It's worth it now. <laughs> I was reading your article um, for the um, in the in the GMT newsletter, and 
guys, if you're even halfway thinking about it, um, P500, this thing, it's $52. Um, you can see the game you're going to get. It is phenomenal. Um, I did kind of like ID Jester's idea of uh, providing extra D10 because you might throw a few across the board. Um, you might lose it. So having, you know, some extra ones might be a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, guy, and I see people looking here, and and um, I know not everybody's going to be able to be on this live and watching it. So um, if you're gonna, I would definitely make sure you get it, and then put comments in here, guys. Ask questions. Um, uh, it start if you guys notice, it started really flowing through. The more you get to it. And once you go through the phases a couple times, you're really going to understand it and understand at least the process. You may not understand, you know, like the best thing to do at the time. And I'll tell you what, it's it's a blast. Even though it was really going horrible for me, I still had fun. And if you look, the last couple things, things started to turn around. So for sure. Uh, looks like we might have had a couple orders tonight too, Gene. Uh, yeah, looking for the comments. Way. Cool. Okay. I'm working on my retirement fund, you know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so no. since since I've got you on here, Gene, um, yeah. you know, what are some – maybe are there some other things you kind of want to talk about on this that maybe we didn't get to that you think – uh, is kind of a kind of a something or or something you'd kind of want to explain uh, since we didn't get to uh, like all of the the facts so we didn't get to the strategic capabilities uh, as much and that really doesn't change too much throughout the middle of the game from what I've found I could be wrong about that yeah uh, I that, mean the strategic capabilities are, are the part of the game where we just kind of give you our the comparison of the U S against China and and Russia kind of an arms race sort of thing where it, it's not it's not a core part of the game, but every president has to think about it. And and the way the game deals with it is if you ignore it, there, there are some gotchas in there with cards and results that if you let the Russians and the Chinese get ahead of you in those areas, they get extra benefits or you don't do as well in some war or skirmish or competition against them. So it's definitely not a core part of the game, but it's something that the president has to be aware of. And that's how we built it in. That's that's pretty cool. Now, I got a question. So the cascading card decks, where did that yeah. kind of idea come from? I, yeah, I really a, enjoyed that idea, but I, want, I kind of was curious about that. Yeah, I just finished my design notes. And one of the things I, I didn't spend tons of time, but I, I mentioned four innovations I thought in the design that I really liked and, and cascading events was one of them. So what happened is, you know, early on I became dissatisfied that an event card would happen and then just go away. So, you know, you know, you, you change the board state based on the event card, but then you're done and it, it's changed your situation, but you don't get the feeling that the event hangs around and and some events are like that, you know, mm -hmm. but there are also events in the world where they come up and they keep coming up to bite you in the butt again and again over time. And so you might, you might explain how they actually work for people, too. Yeah. So that's where this idea came from of, of creating some cascading events. So could you could you just turn over one of those cascading event cards and zoom in on it? Tony? Yeah, I've I've actually got one up here, so we can take a look at a, the this one right here, this Chinese cyber attacks. Which All right, is kind of a uh, and so, there's one right there of the three deck too. So if you're, okay, if you're so, so the idea here is that these all sit over in the regular event deck. You you know at the start, uh -huh. and the first time you draw them out of the deck, you, you don't know they're a they're they're a cascading event card, but when you pull it up, then you follow the directions under the C, which in this case is in the left column, which means it came from the crisis deck. And the idea here is that a crisis comes up and bang, you get hit in the mouth with it. But this one isn't going to be like the other kind. It has the potential to hang around. So when you're done with it from the crisis deck, you put it in the two deck. And the two and the three decks are the only decks in the game that can stay face up. So you get to know what's in there all the time. So you can shuffle through them or look through them at any point and go, here's the things that may pop up. And the reason for that 
is because when they come up again from the two deck, that would be by drawing the two chit from the from the cup or the three chit from the cup. Mm -hmm. So when one of those comes up, you shuffle all the cards in that deck, in the two deck or the three deck, and then you randomly pull one. But you can look at them to see what the mix could be, right? Mm -hmm. And so the idea is you're building up through the game various cascading events, and you know that, hey, China Cyber – could be back. What's your other one in that in that pile? Uh, mm -hmm. Iran defies. Yeah, um, you, really, you know, then you've got some potential with Iranian nuke problems down the road, and and each, not every one of them, but most of them have a trigger when you pull it from the tube. So can you go in just a little bit closer on that, Tony? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's as that's as close as I can get. Okay. I think we picked the one card that doesn't have a trigger on it. Well, um, well, let me move to the other card real quick here. Oh, not both. I didn't want both. Hold on. There we go. Um, how's is this one that way? Uh, the Iran. <laughs> yeah. So. So when it first shows up, you increase the nuke track by one box, right? Mm -hmm. And you add yep. a reasonable price to the Middle East, and then it goes away for a while. But you don't know when these are going to get drawn again, right? Because it's when the two or the three come out of the cup. And then maybe maybe you get it, maybe you don't, based on the shuffle. Okay? So when it comes up again, you can then choose. This one's a little different, too. But in this case, you get a choice. Make a UN sanctions roll to try to deal with Iran. Uh -huh. Or you can spend three presidential APs to actually make a military strike against them. Which for me actually is probably not a bad idea because my GSSA ally relations is horrible and like doing that would actually improve. Yeah. Improve it, it, might, it might help solve a problem. <laughs> yep. So the, the idea here of these sitting face up is that a lot of them have triggers for the two and three and they'll say, you know, if whatever the condition is, then um, a lesser um, event happens. And well, yet, yeah. Uh, well, if look at the natural disaster one right next to it, I think that's kind of right. what you're looking. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. And so for the second one, um, it's representing the cleanup and costs and concerns. Actually, that is. Let's see. Because I rolled on it, or whatever I did with the rolls, spending actions. And I was actually able to get, obviously, a zero or less in this case. Right. So that was good. To the three. Yeah. And then you know there's going to be cleanup issues, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so this is one that you wouldn't want, for example, to deplete your presidential APs. Because a way to get out of this is to, is to spend three presidential APs. You with me? Yep. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm reading that. Well, so the clean, yeah. So if you don't... Just, the triggers are different for each card and some of them are stronger and, and, and some of them aren't. But the idea being that, you know, then that there's something you need to work on to mitigate the impact of that card. And some of them even have you instead of uh, putting it in the three deck after it goes to the two deck and seeing this play out over a long time. If you do well enough and it comes up in the two deck, it can go out of the game. I'm trying to find one real quick here. If I can. Oh, those are just events, though. I think. Do you have that deck? Usually, yeah, there's a it's deck. down. It's down here. Yeah, hold on. Let's, because uh, I can then shuffle it. Cascade. Yeah, here we go. Here's. Yeah. Here's the cascading. Pull some of those out. Let's just look at them. Yep. It sounds like. Uh, so I've got one, two, and then three. Oh, oh, flip. All right, one of them's good for you, so we won't deal with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of them looks bad to me too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that last one, the presidential election scandal, does not look good. So, <laughs> so you would know on this one on the right, the election scandal, that you need yeah. to work on your relations with Congress because yeah. you're going to have to make a RWC check. And if you leave it where yours are right now, um, <laughs> I know this this isn't in your game right now, but yeah, but if it yeah. were, 
you'd look at that and go, I need to put some of my domestic actions and maybe spend some APs to get an extra action here and there to work on my relations with Congress. So if this card, if and when this card comes up, I've got a better chance of passing that check. Now, if I remember right, there's ways to add these cascading events into the decks. Is that correct? If there I'm... are. There okay, are. Yeah. There... So, so this could be something that could come into my game, but it's it's most likely not. But there could be an event that pulls more. <laughs> oh, God, why did I say that? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so <laughs> there, there's always about 50 event cards that aren't going to be in any given game. Mm -hmm. And then there's also these these small decks that you make of terrorism cards and uh, natural disaster cards and cascading event cards that you might get a few of those that a game result tells you to pull one of those out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just as if you'd pulled it from the crisis deck. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I've had to do that once or once or twice at a time. So that's that's what reminded me of that. So, so um, anyway, the, the idea with these with these cascading events cards is that it it helps you build that story of those things that just continue to come back and bug you. And you know something about this game that's pretty much generally true across the board is there's always. Um, opportunity cost you, you never quite have enough uh actions or ap's to do what you want but if you have a problem and you just ignore it and keep ignoring it chances are it's really going to hurt you at some point and that happens with the cascading event cards and spades i i love the i love that idea because after you said that the whole idea of like when you have an event card deck for something you play the event and then it just kind of disappears like I, I, that's that's really, really, really cool that I that that you you were like, well, wait a second, a lot of these events can kind of have lingering effects later on down the road, and that's basically kind of what this does. It gives you an immediate effect, but I love the fact that later on down the road, you know, it's coming there. And I, in one of the games I, I had played, uh, there was a, it was a mass shooting card, right? And so gun legislation was in there. And so I needed knew I needed to work on that just in case I had to pull that card again. So when the bills came up, I was able to kind of focus on that. So I thought that was to me that was that was really ingenious. And I, I, I thought I think this is one of those things. And I look forward to reading your designer notes, by the way, um, and looking at the other uh, kind of unique things that you have that you've put into this. Uh, the what the the other three that you say that were that you find uh, really really eventful and eventful and stuff like that so yeah I um to try really hard because the, you know to find four i mean dang it's not that good of a design you know so, <laughs> <me> a <laughs> i love i love designers they're so humble <laughs> <laughs> they're they're just absolutely so humble i'm looking forward to seeing this like in the flesh with the final components because um and, and not to blow sunshine but I really do. Anytime I've had quality, your components are extremely high quality, and I'm looking forward to seeing this thing in the flesh. By the way, and I know you probably are too. You probably can't wait to see yeah. it finalized. I mean, it's it's been your baby for years, and I know a lot of people have been looking forward to it. And I'll tell you what, it's been one of those games that I'm like, yeah, I, I've been I loved helping Mike out because it's been fun to kind of learn the game. And then it's like, he's like, okay, I got new, I got new docs. I'm like, Oh, I got to start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I am like you really looking forward to the, the final batch. I think it's probably good that it takes three or four months to get them back from the printer because the, you know, this last six months where we've really been in the home stretch of putting finalizing everything, it's been a lot for Mike and me and the whole team. And so I need a few months to just not think about it. But uh, hopefully about the time I'm ready to play again, then the, my uh, proof copy will show yeah. up. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So you can forget about it, put it to bed for a little while, let your mind get away from it, and then that proof copy shows up and it, it excites it all over again. So Right. Well, I do plan on doing um, some more of these uh, every two to three Fridays. I'm thinking about putting some more up so we can go cool. through some more of the game. And uh, uh, you're always welcome uh, to jump on. I, I enjoyed it because it, it, as we approach things, 
you were able to explain your design process or your thought behind it or why it works the way it does. And it really leaves it open. And in I now I don't have to read all the design notes, but <laughs> because well, yeah, yeah. You're, you're giving it, you're giving it to us and it's, it's kind of neat to hear it. I'm, I'm more of an auditory and visual person learner anyways. Um, so it's definitely, by the way, and I know I, uh, you have an open invitation to the war room with ID Jester and rough swordsman, uh, and oh, myself. Cool. So, um, when we get actually, you know, when, maybe when we get closer to time, when this is getting really close to coming out, we can have you on and, you know, really, uh, talk about a little bit. And I know you're a designer, you know, also it's nice to hear about from the game side of things. Um, yeah. you know, the company and, and everything like that. So I really do appreciate that. So we've got, we've got two hours and one minute in, so I am exhausted. I'm going to go have a stiff drink. Uh, <laughs> Good job, Tony. So uh, Gene, thank you for coming on Mike, uh, as usual. And just so everybody knows, um, on ID gesture channel on Sunday, we are going to play, be playing another of, uh, GMT's, uh, wonderful games and designed by uh mr mike himself uh we're going to be playing some tank duel and it's going to be me and rough and id jester and mike's going to be there and uh, i think dave from dave's gaming cave another good channel and um who's the other one i can't remember we nerd. just had him on game we nerd. just had him on yeah um game nerd yeah game yeah games workshop nerd workshop nerd workshop so um, he'll be on John. I think it's John Reed. I think is what his name is. So all six of us will be uh, battling out uh, and uh, go to ID Jester channel and, and, and enjoy that one. And, you know, it's been fun. So I want to thank everybody that showed up and also um, everybody that um, watches this later on. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in. And so that way I can answer them or at least, uh, um, give you a vague answer to it <laughs> if i can't answer it or i will look into it so with that i want to thank everybody um gene thank you mike thank you. thank you and have and have a good night all right Thanks, everybody. Perfect.